human rights lawyer Femi Falano has quashed the report, which stated that he received 28 million naira from the suspended acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, who is being investigated for corruption allegations by a special presidential panel. Falano issued the rebuttal in a pre-action letter signed by his lawyer. He demanded the retraction of the claim by a newspaper that published the story. However, the newspaper's story was based on a report published by the federal government-owned news agency of Nigeria, which claims to have obtained the final report of a prior presidential panel allegedly indicting Magu for being unable to account for the interest generated from 550 billion naira cash recovered from 2015 to 2020. Meanwhile, Falano's lawyer demanded the retraction of Nan's story as published by the Lagos-based newspaper within 48 hours. We're now joined by Ivan Zufeli, a legal practitioner, and Achike Chude, a political analyst, to look at the Magu situation. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right, let me start with you, um, Mr. Ufeli. Yeah. Since 2003, the EFCC had four, has had four chairmen, um, if we include Magu, Ribadu, Waziri, Lamode. The first three bowed out in rather controversial circumstances. We're now immersed in one with Magu. Do you see a similar end? Hello, come again, please. I'm asking about the situation with Magu. Subsequent um, chairman of um, the EFCC had had similar situation, living in very controversial circumstances. Is that what you see playing out again now? Well, uh, first of all, let's, uh, let's establish the fact that we've had uh, three um, EFCC chairman and one acting chairman. Hello? With you, go ahead. Okay, so I, I, th I think that uh, the uh, organization called ESCC has established a precedent, a precedent of uh, having controversy and being thrown out by various forms of corrupt tendencies uh, in, in office. And that is because the ESCC, you know, it's empowered to do so many things at the same time. Okay, mm -hmm. the ELCC will uh, investigate economic and financial crimes. They will make arrests. They will be the one to charge when properties are forfeited. They will be the one to manage the same properties. They will be the one to go about everything about everything. And that is why uh, along the line, they are going to find so many cases of corruption because the organization is faced with too many tasks. Uh, uh, one would have thought that by now there should be other institutions that will take care of the management of properties, uh, while ESCT will focus on investigation and prosecution so that they will have a streamlined function. But in this case, is they are just all over the place. And then uh, the, the leaders of we've had over time, I've had one criminal uh, matter or allegation all the time. We have not been able to select you know, someone who will do the job and do it effectively. And uh, the reason they keep taking police officers to head the ESCC. It's one other issue that I do not understand. Even when the ESCC Act did not say that it is the exclusive preserve of uh, the police force, right, one would um, have thought that uh, there should be some level of uh, rejigging, some level of um, uh, restrategizing, so that the ESCC will be able to carry out its function effectively. Mr. Ofeli, 
Um, let's bring in um, Mr. Chude. Um, I'll, I'll come to you on the issue, or you said something about systems, uh, alluded to it. I'll come to it in a bit if we have time. Uh, but for now, let's uh, go to Mr. Chude and uh, take a look at the complaint being put forward by Magu's lawyer. Uh, one of them was that he, he felt his um, client was paraded like a common criminal. And also, uh, most importantly, he said they are yet to see the petitions containing the allegations against him, nor had the Committee availed uh, him with the terms of reference. What do you? Uh, what? How do you react to that? Well, uh, I think to the first one, I think uh, in a way it's remarkable. Uh, um, not that it is proper uh, for him to be availed with a uh, part of the matter under which uh, he is charged. Uh, but um, it is remarkable uh, in the sense that. Uh, there seems to be a criticism of uh, the way Abana is being handled. Uh, the fact that uh, it appeared that um, uh, the government, uh, in this case, uh, you know, or those executing him or the before the panel, um, they are doing that. Uh, and then again, seeking recourse to the media. Uh, and the question we have to address is how many times in the past uh, people complained about uh, the media trial or the software. Uh, whenever they had a problem with uh, the PSCC, in most cases, before the matter even uh, gets to the Supreme Court, uh, in, 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 most of the people that were interdicted by the case were already at judge duty. And of course, there was a thought out that a lot of critique about this suspect we are being given to the media uh, by the ESC. So the irony is that uh, today, the same man uh, who uh, organization was responsible for this media parade of the uh, suspect is now complaining about the same thing happening to him. Uh, no wonder, I think people remember uh, the suggestion of Mr. Pavalo, who is the former Inspector General of Police, uh, who denied people uh, their fundamental human rights, uh, who had to be locked up and refused for them to uh, be released, even though. And uh, the law supported the release. And uh, you now find the situation when they had problems with the federal government. He was not seeking recourse uh, to the rule of law. And those things that he had also denied uh, a, a suspect. Uh, so, what goes around comes around. That's what it is. You know, so, a lot of people will just look at the whole of this thing. All right, and, I would like to speak scenario. quickly um, yeah. on, the, on the other part of the question about him not being availed, the details of the allegations against him, the said petition. Um, is that something that seems right or something that such an esteemed panel will forget to yeah, do, so I, to speak? I, I, I think, yes, I, I think it is um, a, a very serious issue. If uh, he has not been availed of uh, the accusations that have been made against him, I think that. Uh, would be against the norm. That would be extremely very wrong. Of course, we know that uh, the chairman of that panel is uh, just the head of uh, Ayo Salami, a man that is reputed to uh, be uh, somebody who has acquitted himself with some degree of uh, fairness. Uh, you, you know, and so we expect that uh, uh, that kind of uh, panel, a uh, panel like you rightly described, uh, uh, is one that could also ensure that um, they're trying to. Uh, 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 you know, prosecute Mago in this manner, that Mago will be dealing with uh, his, you know, uh, with, with, uh, his rights, and that uh, his rights will be respected. And part of his rights is that he will be dealing of the accusations that have been made against him. It should be strange if that's not the case, because everybody is aware All of right. the charges that have been made against uh, Mago. At least we've seen that in the paper, in the media. Let's go back to Mr. Ufeli. Um, still on complaints from uh, Magu's lawyer, um, one of them is that witnesses were called and examined by the committee behind Magu's back and without allowing him and his counsel of choice uh, participate in the processes involving the witnesses. Uh, the question would be, are there grounds where this is allowed and does Magu's case fit the bill? Well, uh, I, I think that, that was wrong by the panel. Uh, inviting witnesses to testify without allowing um, the counsel to the uh, suspects in the same uh, panel uh, was wrong. Uh, that is also very arbitrary. I mean, uh, Magu, is being faced, Magu is facing this allegation. We should also remember that he is a citizen of Nigeria. 
We also have a uh, right, certain constitutional right. It's also presumed innocent uh, until the contrary is proven by Section 32 sub 5 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. So I think that uh, the panel must do the right thing. The panel must look at the law once again and uh, make sure that uh, they don't create room for which prosecution will collapse. Because what they are doing now is part of the, is part of the investigation. If the matter ever goes to court, all they are doing now will be part of uh, the story and the fact of the case for which the defense counsel we use against the prosecution. Uh, so it is important that uh, they do the right thing. Um, he has not been found guilty of these offenses or, or the allegations leveled against him. So it will be wrong for you not to give him fair hearing. Okay. And then even the petition, he has not been availed with the petition. All we see are allegations of the fact that uh, he could not account for 332 houses uh, he could not account for yeah, yeah, the interest yeah, generated from five hundred and fifty billion naira cash. Mr. Ufeli, um, still from what you're saying now, I want to ask: uh, Is there something skewed with the fact that a report that probably was done before mm -hmm. now is just now being presented to the public as per this allegation? Because it doesn't seem to be coming to, from the current uh, presidential uh, panel investigating Mang. It seems to have been something that was done before now. So what do you make of the, you know, the coincidence of the presentation? And why is it that it doesn't seem to be any formal confirmation from the presidency? Well, uh, you know, you know uh, the petition, the, the, the petitioner raised a lot of issues that he has mismanaged the following. I mean, uh, all, all the allegations actually stem out from the petition. The major allegations stem out of the petition. If they are about 24 or thereabouts, you understand? Yeah. So that is from where this issue is coming from. Then the panel is using those allegations, okay, and the evidence they have, which the petitioner submitted, to drill Magu, and that is where they are pulling out all these figures from, and all the asset uh, issues that they are pulling out, confronting him with it, and then uh, stating the fact that he has not been able to provide adequate and uh, satisfactory explanation as to how these uh, assets and cash were, were managed. You understand? It, okay. it, it goes back to my opening. Uh, there must be an institution that will manage assets. PSCC is not, is not an expert. They are not an organization that is into asset management. Okay, we have uh, asset management uh, 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 corporations in this country. We have outfit, private, public, uh, out, even uh, government uh, uh, organizations that are into asset management. Yeah. which uh, I think they should undertake this function. Uh, Mr. Ufeli, well, you just sort of answered the question I was uh, prepared, going to ask you on the issue of systems in place to, you know, proper management so we don't have situation of these kind of okay. allegations. But on a closing note, um, I'll go to Mr. Chude. Uh, I'll ask, some call it a spin. Others say it's a win for the anti-corruption fight. A presidency statement says there are no sacred cows in this fight. What do you what? say? I, I, I think what is, what is happening is that um, the government is just trying to uh, take advantage of the situation and then to steal it in such a way to do the beneficial to them. Anyway, we look at it, the government has had a bloody, bloody deal in terms of their anti corruption process. Because you cannot, I do not forget that this particular situation is it, not, it's not a one-way street. There have been brickbacks shown by, by both sides in this context, in this matter. And that is, first of all, that uh, the man in charge of the uh, anti-corruption war, Madrid, is accused of all kinds of ongoing uh, corrupt practices. While the other side, the Madrid side, has also accused the minister of enforcement uh, of corruption. That uh, the reason why Madrid is having problems with, uh, with the team it's simply because there are some cases that he does detect. And the people who speak corrupt as a friend, minister of justice. So when you have this situation, the two principal people responsible for fighting corruption in the country, accusing one another of corruption, it simply tells you that the anti-corruption 
you know, battles a very large extent has been compromised and undermined. And there are no way, there's no way. Anybody can talk about and then they give it a different state that it is an indication that there are no specific cows. But if that is the case, we must also remember that under the Obasanjo regime, an inspector general of police uh, was also charged for corruption, and governors were also charged and indicted for corruption. So, but, so if what it does it simply means is that, I mean, like somebody once said, you know, with the more things seem the same, the more they remain the same. And I think right. that that statement, you know, uh, proves true about the present situation with uh, the article the article of battle of the government. All right, Mr. Achike Chude, thank you very much for your time on the news with us. My pleasure. Uh, Mr. Evans Ufeli, um, in 30 seconds, your concluding thoughts? Yeah, I think that uh, the, panel, the panel must be um, very clear on issues uh, so that they don't uh, convolute the process. All and right. the, the counsel to Magu should be given opportunity and should be availed the petition so that he can go to the petition and know how to respond adequately. If the matter is going to be charged to court, they should do that as quickly as possible to enable him to uh, prepare because the constitution says that uh, he must give uh, an accused person adequate time and facility to prepare, prepare. for his defense. All right, so I think we should do the right thing and make this matter very clear and straightforward. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. You're welcome.